guys, welcome back to my channel, and I figured I would show you guys how I label my swatch sticks. I actually get quite a few questions about this because I have done this from the beginning, so it's a little bit more manageable. If you're coming in doing this a little bit later, it may be daunting, but I promise you it is worth it, and it's so nice, and it's consistent, and I love it. So let's go ahead and get into this video. All right, let's talk label maker. So I use a cheap one. This I think was like $30 on Amazon. I've had it for about two years and it's awesome. I love this one. You can get a fancier one, less fancy, but I think this is the key to making your, um, essentially your swatch is looking awesome. So here is a finished one, but we will get there, but you can see it just looks so good. All right. So I use a clear tape. And I also don't use batteries. I use this, which I just plug into the wall. And you know, if you're a labeler, you will label what your uh, things are. So I have this as label maker. I use the 12 millimeter and which is essentially half an inch clear and it's laminated. So again, you can kind of see here, I actually cut this down, which I will show you guys but I love this and I have it on the smallest print, which I will walk through with you guys. So we are going to turn this bad boy on. I have used this obviously quite a bit. So this is a little scratch, but again, I'm not too worried about it. So let's go ahead and get into how I label. Clearly I was labeling stuff, so I figured it would be a good idea. So you can see there's a whole bunch of different settings kind of around here, and I personally like small. So I'm going to try to get this so I can see and you can see. So I come over here to, no, where am I going? I'm sorry. So let's go to font, size, you hit okay. I have it set to small. And then width, I have three fifths, which I think is the default. Styles, the default. I have the alignment default. Font, let's go ahead and hit OK. That is what I'm using. And that's it. That's all I have set. Although, no, I'm sorry, there is one more thing I have set. Um, maybe it's in alignment. No, it is, let's see, escape, let's go to label, margin. So margin, I have set to narrow because I don't want a lot of space between mine. So let's get out of this. So let's say I'm doing LE and I have cap lock on because I want to have everything in capital. And let's do London fog. Now, normally I would hit print. You know what, let's just do it. I already have it, but it's fine. So I hit print, it came out here, and you can see where it says feed okay. I hit escape, and then I come in and type my next one. Oh, one more R. And I would hit print, and it would be continuous. So you can see here, once I print it all, there is very little mark in between here. And then if you notice, any time you start it, you're gonna lose probably close to an inch, but that is kind of mitigated because you are not hitting and cutting it. And you can see here at the end. So you're saving for every probably two you do, you save one. Does that make sense? Because of the spacing. And literally all I do, I guess, well technically you cut that and you can see, well, I didn't feed it, so that's why it's like that. Um, but what I do here is I'm gonna fast forward for this, but I cut here, cut towards the end. So you're cutting it out like this, but I flip it so I kind of come here, bam, bam, move it, it's okay. See when you move it up enough you can do both of those. 
and that's it. So I really like this method because I don't mind cutting them out if it saves me tape. I don't know if it's because I'm just being cheap or I just find it easier to do that way. Well, I guess I didn't need to fast forward, but this part I will fast forward. So if you are to take a stick, no, let's actually grab the right one. These are slightly wider, so I'll flip it upside down, kind of line it up. They're slightly wider, I don't know, you can kind of see this edge here. So I actually cut mine. So, get this out of the way. And you don't have to cut it, I just prefer to cut it. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's clear. And what I like about these ones specifically, it has a slit. Bam. So grab your swatch stick, come in. I place it close to the color. You can choose to place it close to the edge and I just make it go down. And then that is a perfectly labeled swatch stick and I promise it looks amazing. So let's just grab some right here. So you're like, okay, great. You don't necessarily see the white. You literally see the color here. And then you get to see what the name is. Does that make sense? Like I hope you can see the impact that using clear and just that text works. It's not messy. It's not um, white. It's clear and the only thing you're looking at is the color. And I think that's great to help your clients out. Again, I do this for myself so I'm not working with clients, but when I look at this, I'm not looking at something that's super impactful. I'm looking at the color. So let's go ahead and label these. I will fast forward and we'll see you in a minute. And there we have it. That is how I label, and this is how I store them, which you would have seen earlier. I break them up into different rings. Again, I'm just doing them for myself, so I don't have a ton. I have about four sticks of these, and I just think these look fantastic. I hope you guys do too, and I hope this helps you guys figure out what kind of system you want to label your colors with. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.